I'm Ivai Uradev. Um, I'm part of the R&D group in um, Sofia, and I'm the architect of the vCenter server wife cycle management. So um, who am I? So I have a master degree in computer science. I'm more than 13 years in the computer science uh, business, um, more than seven years. I'm part of VMware, and since five years, I'm leading the uh, VMware uh, wife cycle management team. OK. so. Um, Today, um, this is actually the, the perfect run book you can build for um, upgrading the vCenter server. I'm going through all the phases you might have when you plan um, upgrade or migrate of the vCenter server. So the first phase is the awareness. So um, you recognize that there is a new version of the vCenter server upgrade, and um, you you learn about it, and you you start thinking about how you can upgrade to that version. The next the next phase is actually to assess. Um, um, to, to discover your environment, identify the gaps, check the compatibility guides, um, check the interoperability matrices, and decide whether you would like to um, upgrade. Um, of course, you also check um, what are the features included in that version before taking before taking that decision. Then, this is actually the um, the, the phase which is um, uh, harder. Right, you need to plan the upgrade. So you respond to the, those vCenter server requirements, identify the dependencies of all the products which have to be upgraded, you determine what are the sequence of products and um, which one uh, should be upgraded first, which one should be upgraded second, etc. cetera. Um, you budget a maintenance window, decide when actually this upgrade has to happen. Um, perhaps check when, when you have a uh, least uh, customers um, log into the vCenter server and uh, plan the upgrade exactly at that time. Um, you create a worksheet with what are the procedure which shall happen during the upgrade. And one of, um, so every best plan for upgrade have a rollback plan. Because something can, can go wrong. Network outages, electrician outages, um, unpredicted uh, failures, etc. So have a rollback plan. Then you prepare for the upgrade. So you download everything which is required for the upgrade. You prepare the, the resources like uh, temporary IP addresses, gateway, DNSs, uh, passwords, etc. Um, you prepare the licenses as well because you need to apply them afterwards. You back up the, the environment you have in case something goes wrong, you, you shall be able to, to roll back. You test the upgrade procedure and also you test the rollback procedure. Because you, if something goes wrong, you, you must have a rollback plan how you can quickly go online. Then this is the actual phase. You upgrade. So you take snapshots, you, you run the health checks, check that your environment is ready to be upgraded. Then you upgrade the PSC and the vCenter servers. I will go into much more details in, the, in a minute. You, and then you apply the licenses. Without, upgrade is not done. Right, so there is a post upgrade actions. So as a post upgrade, you have to validate that everything is upgraded or migrated successfully. All the data is there. You, you can browse it, you can see it. Also, you, need, you might need to update some products which are dependent on the vCenter server. Also, you might need to upgrade the ESXi. You might need to upgrade the VM tools, the VDS. Um, if you have a VRA, vSAN, NSX, they might be dependent on that version of the vCenter server. So you might need to upgrade them as well. If you have a third party for some backup uh, uh, solutions, you might need to upgrade them as well. So you have to be prepared for the entire sequence of products which has to be upgraded during upgrade. So the agenda for today's meeting is that um, I'm going to um, much more details in those cells which are in the darker blue. So although the focus will be on how to assess and plan the successful upgrade, we will talk about what actually the upgrade does. Because once you know what the upgrade does, you'll be better prepared how to, um, you, you, you can better uh, prepare a plan for the entire upgrade. So let, I, I will talk about a lot for the PSC and vCenter server. So the PSC comes from Platform Service Controller. So I would like to define them upfront, although most of you might um, 
know what they are. So the PSE or platform service controller is consisted of services which are common for the OV center servers. So here comes the single uh, sign-on, the roles, certificates, permission, licensing, and tax. While the Vista server component is actually your inventory, um, your database, the HTML file and the web client comes here, um, host profile, how to deploy, content library, all that comes here. So there are two um, favors of deployment which are common for um, how you can distribute the PSC and the vCenter server. The first one is the simplest one. So um, everything is installed on the same um, virtual machine. So um, you have single virtual machine where everything is running and um, this actually forms the entire um, vCenter server. So um, it's uh, easier to deploy, no load balancing for um, small customer, that, that's perfect. All right, um, the second um, most favorite deployment is the uh, vCenter server with external uh, PSE. So you have a two, vir two virtual machines. On the first one, you install the PSE. On the second one, you install the um, vCenter server, and they are connected. So this actually allows you to have a better uh, resilience of the PSE, because we'll see in a, in a second how actually you can deploy different PSEs. Um, you can um, put a load balancer between both machines. Um, you, you have an um, uh, enhanced link mode. All those features come in place. So here are the um, most common topologies which are based on your requirements. So each customer might have a different requirements which can lead to a different topologies. The first one is the simplest one, which I have already talked about, which is the vCenter server with embedded PC, perfect for a small customers and just put it in uh, your uh, data center and it works perfectly. Um, the next one is um, the vCenter server with external PSE. So actually you have uh, several vCenter server pointing to the same PSE and from the UI client you, you actually can browse the um, inventory of both vCenter servers. So this is pretty convenient if, for example, you, you want to manage um, more hosts than one vCenter server supports. So actually you can install two vCenter servers, um, distribute the host among these vCenter servers and through one UI you can browse them all. Or you might have actually, uh, you may want to have a um, um, better resilience of the PSE. In this case you actually um, put more than one PSE and if something goes wrong you can actually repoint the vCenter servers to another PSE. Thus you can have a better resilience if one PSE goes down. Or you might want to have an automatic um, resilience of the PSC. Just put a load balancer between the vCenter server and the PSC, and the load balancer shall, det shall decide to which PSC the traffic sh uh, should be forwarded. Or you might have a deployment across sites. So you don't want the vCenter servers to be directly connected to a PSC in a, in a different site. This is the reason why actually you put the PSCs to replicate the data, and each vCenter is connected to a PSC in the same data center. This is the picture where, where actually there is a load balancer for a better resilience. And if something goes wrong, the vCenter, so the vCenter server is forwarded to another PSC and the traffic goes on and you don't, you're not disturbed that the, uh, one of the PSC goes down. Or you might have, you might want actually to have a HA for the vCenter server. As Emato already announced, we support the HA in the, in the vCenter server. So if you have an embedded deployment, you, you can configure the, um, the HA feature in the vCenter server. This is a three node uh, cluster, which the Matt was talking about. Or in case you have an external deployment, the, the, the vCenter server with external PSC, this actually means that you, you have to enable the um, uh, vCenter server HA along with putting a load balancer between the vCenter server and the PSCs. All right, lots of topologies, but some, someone needs to upgrade them, right? So. The good news is that all of those topologies are supported during the upgrade. Um, one caveat here is that topology is not changed during upgrade. So if you want to uh, change the topology, do, do it up from the upgrade, because during upgrade, we preserve the topology. If one topology is unsupported, because sometimes we announce that one of the topology is not supported, reconfigure um, your deployments up from the upgrade. This is, a, um, this is what you have to do before doing upgrade. 
Um, consolidation of uh, vSphere SSO domains, it's supported only in the 5.5. We're looking for how we actually we can improve that in the, in the next release. So um, let's take example what actually happens with the topology. So you have a, a vSphere 5.5, um, a, a, a vCenter server, inventory service, all those services are installed on the same client and we want to upgrade them. What actually happens is we upgrade them and the architecture is not changed. So we remain in the same topology as we spoke about. In case we have a, each service installed on a different box, what actually happens during upgrade? So during upgrade, we upgrade the SSO service. So it actually tr it's transformed to the PSE, the platform service controller. And then we upgrade the vCenter server. As part of upgrading the vCenter server, we actually form all the services into one VCSA. So the consequence here is important. First, we need to upgrade the SSO or the PSC, and then we need to upgrade the vCenter server. Same happens when actually we have more than one PSC and more than more vCenter servers. First, we need to upgrade all the PSCs, and then we need to upgrade the vCenter servers. Same procedure. Right? Now it's more interesting when we want, want to actually change the topology. So we have a two vCenter servers with embedded link mode, and we want to actually move to another topology with enhanced link mode. So we want to have a two vCenter servers with external PSC to support enhanced link mode. So what actually has to happen here, you have to deploy a third SSO, configure it to replicate the data from the existing SSOs, then you actually need to uninstall the embedded SSOs. So actually, you change the topology. Now we are in enhanced link mode. And then we upgrade it. So we first upgrade the SSO, and then we upgrade the vCenter servers. During upgrade, what is important to know? So the identity of upgraded vCenter server is preserved. So all UAD, IP, FQDNs, certificates, everything is preserved. So after upgrade, if you're running, uh, if you have customers using that vCenter server or if you have an uh, application which are on top of the vCenter server, none of them will understand that the um, vCenter server is upgraded because the identity is same, the API is backward compatible, so everything can be accessed. AD membership, so all the users shall be able to log in to the, to the same vCenter server, so this is preserved. The inventory configuration is migrated by default. So all the inventory will be there, permissions, rows, everything is, is there. The historical and performance data migration is optional. So it's up to you whether you want to preserve them or not. Why you might not want to actually preserve them? Because it takes time. It takes time to migrate all the data. It could be several uh, hundred gigabytes. It will take several hours to upgrade them. If you have a small maintenance window, you may want to not preserve them. So um, install and upgrade is now a two-stage process, which actually means that first, you have to deploy the OVF with your most favorite tool, and then you need to configure the appliance. So you need to go to, to VAMI on port uh, 5480, and from there, you can, you can configure it. As Matt said, you, can, you may want to actually take a, a snapshot before running the stage two, before configuring the OS. If something goes wrong, you can revert to that snapshot and then um, change something, perhaps um, um, fix a DHCP server or fix a DNS server or fix some entries and then um, restart the upgrade, deployment, whatever. Um, may, this actually makes troubleshooting um, uh, way easier because in 6.0, we, the installer was in external tool, and although all the networking checks passed, the installation or upgrade might still fail because it's a different networking checks from the appliance to the source appliance or from the third box to the source appliance. So now, actually, we have a, a much better troubleshooting story in the 6.5. We have a different players where, which can um, take it play to um, deploy, upgrade, or migrate. So we have a UI. So as part of the ISO, there, there, it comes UI and CLI. So you can use both, right? Which, which one you 
you you are most confident with, go go for it. So there is a standalone UI. Yeah, you can. So both CI and UI can be run on uh, Linux, Windows, Mac OS, so whichever um, runs uh, well for for your use cases, go for it. So as you can see here in the in the UI, we have all the install, upgrade, migrate, and also restore. For the CI, same story. We support we support them all. So it's a really interesting question: what actually happens during Upgrade. So actually, what is the entire workflow during upgrade? So we have a vCenter server appliance, and we have a jump box, the quant machine. What we have to do first is to download the ISO and start whatever um, installer fits uh, best in our use case. We can use the UI, we can use the CLI, or we might want to use the OVF tool just to deploy the OVF, and from there start the VAMI UI to actually finish the entire upgrade. In all those cases, we first need to deploy the OVF using temporary IP address. Aha! This actually means that before doing the upgrade, we need to prepare a temporary IP address. Okay? This is another requirement. We, we must think about it. So then what happens? Then as part of the migration process, we first start the exporting phase. During export, we export all the data from the database and from the services and put them locally on the, um, on the source vCenter server appliance, or this could be a, also a, a Windows box. So we put them locally, and as a next step, we copy it over to the target VCSA, over SSH. Aha, uh -huh. so the SSH must, must work on. So if we have a firewall here, we must allow the, the traffic on port uh, 22. Okay, then what happens? We shut down the source vCenter server. Why? Why, why? why we are doing it? Because we would like to preserve the, ne the, the networking. So as part of this phase, we preserve the IP addresses, uh, masks, DNSs, gateways, everything. The entire networking identity of the source vCenter server is preserved. Um, and now the temporary IP address is disposed. So if you want, you can actually reuse the temporary IP address for upgrading the next vCenter server. Then we configure and start the, um, the target VCSA services, and we are ready to point our browser to the other IP address, to actually to, to the same IP address, and to the web client just to validate that the entire inventory, all, all data we are um, interested in is there and can be browsed. All right, so the vCenter server, the Windows vCenter server is deprecated. So we must have a way to move from Windows to appliance. Um, there is some um, question you must ask yourself before doing that migration. Um, this is definitely the, the, the right choice, right? VMware already announced it. We should go to the, to the VCSA. But actually, what happens with um, products which are running on the on top of the vCenter server, on the Windows vCenter server, they might be a Windows base. So you have to check them up front to see that they actually support the VCSA. Or if not, you, you need to contact um, those, those customers and to, to, to contact um, um, those companies and ask them uh, whether they, they support the appliance. They, they, they have to support the appliance because this is the, the way the VMware goes, so they, they definitely uh, follow us. So this is one consideration you, you need to have in mind. Another one is, we'll talk about in a second, but you see that um, um, as part of the migration, the Windows vCenter server machine will be um, shut down. So in case you have application running on that um, Windows box, you, you might need to um, evacuate them up from the upgrade. Right? This is another thing uh, you must uh, think about. Also, um, the, D the DBs, we are going from external DBs to embedded. This is the, um, everything is combined in the VCSA, all the uh, services and uh, database. So this is another thing you, you might think about in advance. So your DBA admins, what they, so how they should be um, structured, all those uh, stuff. Um, as part of the migration process, so the migration from Windows vCenter server to appliance is very similar to how actually upgrade works, how actually we upgrade from um, uh, one appliance to another. 
the difference here is that in the Windows, there, there is no um, um, building a data transport mechanism. This is the reason why actually um, VMware comes with a, a product uh, named Migration Assistant, which needs to be um, downloaded and um, started upfront the migration. So this is pretty convenient for actually running the bridge checks. You can, you can run the Migration Assistant up from the, um, the, the downtime window, just to make sure that the um, Windows vCenter server is in position to be upgraded, can be upgraded. Um, this is the only prerequisite um, for, for doing migration. So what actually, what happens during the upgrade? Let, let's take a closer look. As I said, you download and run migration assistant on the source uh, vCenter server. Then you uh, download and uh, put the, um, the most convenient um, upgrade player on your gem box. Deploy the VCSA in the same manner as we did for, for the upgrade. We start the migration. The first phase is to export the data to local files. And then we migrate the data to the configuration over the migration assistant. So here, if you have a um, firewall, um, you have to actually allow the port on which the migration assistant has, be, uh, has been executed. So you have an option to um, configure the migration assistant port at the time when actually you start it. Then we shut down the source vCenter server. As I said, evacuate all the third party products which might run on this box because they might not be accessed um, later on. We preserve the network identity of the Windows uh, vCenter server. We configure and start the services. And finally, you can browse um, the, the Windows vCenter server as you did before. Everything should be up and running there. And you can see um, the entire inventory. Um, VUM is now embedded within uh, the VCSA. And um, as part of that, um, during migration, um, you might um, start the VUM on a separate box. So you might want to have um, Windows vCenter server on a one box, VUM on another. So during migration, we actually support that topologies. During migration, you need to run the migration assistant on both the appliances because this is the data uh, transport protocol we are using. And all data will be com combined into one appliance. So as part of the migration, all the data will be put in one appliance. So after upgrade, you can access your VOM data. Uh, one caveat here is that the, although the, vCenter, uh, the Windows vCenter server box will be shut down as part of the upgrade because we want to preserve the networking identity of the vCenter server, the VOM machine will be left there. So we can, if you have um, third-party products installed there, you can leave them on. So as I said, with the upgrading the vCenter server, this is not the end of the entire process. So although you upgrade the, the PSC and the vCenter server, then you have to upgrade the hypervisor. You might have to upgrade the, virtual, the VM tools. You might have to upgrade the VMFS. You might have to upgrade the vSAN, NSX, VRA, or any other products which are running on top of the vCenter server. So up from the upgrade, check the product um, compatibility to know which are the products which have to be upgraded as part of the um, vCenter server upgrade. I was talking about budgeting a maintenance window, right? So you have to be prepared for that maintenance and let, them, let uh, your customer know when this upgrade will happen. Um, but how long does the migration process take? So we run a lot of experiments in our data centers, and we post them as KB articles. So here are two very, very convenient KB articles you might want to check out to see how long, based on your um, inventory and based on your data, how, how long the data might take. So the downtime is actually, um, the system downtime um, depends on how many vCenter uh, server you want to upgrade. So you may want to actually upgrade them in serial manner, or you might want to upgrade them concurrently. Obviously, you have to upgrade. So if you want to actually concurrently upgrade uh, the vCenter servers, you cannot start 
concurrently upgrade of the OV center server and the PSC because there is a consequence you have to follow. So first you have to up upgrade all the PSCs and then concurrently you may want to actually upgrade all the vCenter servers or you may want to upgrade them by on chunks. For example, you may want to have a different um, um, maintenance maintenance window for one data center, another maintenance window for, no, for another da data center. So this is one way to actually shorten the, 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 the vCenter server downtime. Another one is, as I already sa uh, said, uh, it's about skip migrating the historical and performance data. So if you don't care about um, historical and performance data, which includes statistics and events and tasks, then you can skip them as part of the migration. So th there is a there is a radio buttons which allow you to upgrade um, as part of the upgrade to preserve only the inventory or to preserve only the events and tasks or to preserve all, which actually includes statistics, events, and tasks. Another way to actually shorten the downtime is to deploy the target VCSA upfront. Although this will save only like a 10 to 15 minutes, um, there is another benefit of doing that because you'll be able to run the pre-checks upfront. So you will be able to actually um, validate whether all the networking checks are, are going to pass and if the source vCenter server is in good position to be upgraded. Avoid multi-hop upgrade. If we support upgrading from 5.5 to 6.5, just use that path, don't go through 6.0. Because first, you increase the downtime uh, window. Second, you increase the, um, uh, the possibilities of failures. And finally, as I said, um, many customers don't upgrade the entire uh, all the vCenter server in one shot, in one um, downtime window. You may want to actually plan your maintenance windows. First, you may want to upgrade part of your vCenter server. In next uh, maintenance window, you might want to upgrade another part. It's up to you. You define it. Once you upgrade the PSCs, the PSCs are backward compatible, so they can work with older versions of the vCenter server, they can work also with the newer versions of the vCenter servers. So due to my experience, those are the most frequently environment errors I have seen. First is the certificate uh, certificates management. So you have changed the certificates on your um, uh, source um, vCenter server. Everything works perfectly because you you change the certificates in a manner that the application understands it. But this might not be conf conformed with the VMware standards. So before doing upgrade, double check the VMware standard and um, make sure that the certificates are configured in the, um, in the, in the way the VMware conforms. Um, to do that, you can use the, the VMware tools to actually change the, um, um, to apply the, the certificate changes. Another uh, thing which I was talking about is the networking misconfiguration. This includes the um, um, inability to, um, to machines to talk to each other. This actually includes the um, uh, typo in the IP addresses or NetMask or DNS servers, all those of um, networking misconfigurations. Also the, the firewalls, if you haven't uh, properly configured the firewalls up from the upgrade, this is another um, frequently seen error. AD permission issues. This is another set of issues which I have noticed uh, because when we um, when we migrate from Windows vCenter server to appliance, what happens actually that we need to rejoin the appliance in the same um, Active Directory, which actually means that the user might need a higher level of permissions to actually re rejoin. Just imagine that your user is able to join AD, but if another user is joined the, the AD, then your user needs to have a higher permissions in order to be able to unjoin the the, the AD from the from the previous user and to rejoin from um, your user's behalf. So when you do migration and if the source vCenter server is joined with um, by another user, the your user might might need to have a, a higher level of permissions. Um, this is uh, about the products compatibility. Um, after upgrades, some uh, products might stop working. So check the product compatibility upfront to know what is the order of 
products which have to be upgraded and what are, what are the products which have to be upgraded post uh, the vCenter server upgrade. Um, unsupported version compatibility is another area of errors. For example, many customers try to upgrade from 6.0 uh, from 6.0 U3 to 6.5 GA, although this is not supported. So, if you have checked the, uh, the metrics, we actually announced that um, this part is not supported. So, um, have in mind that the, the version uh, in, in um, compatibility um, play tricks here. So. Um, as I said, lots of combinations are supported, but there are a few which are not supported and you should know them upfront uh, upgrading, so you have to be better prepared uh, when um, it, it um, comes time to upgrade. The one of the limitations is that the certificate chain doesn't comfort the VMware standards. As I said, use the uh, VMware tools to re regenerate the certificates. Another limitation is that the source vCenter server might have a more than one IP address. As part of the migration, we preserve just the one IP address. And that IP address, which is actually, um, w which is matching the, v the vCenter server and the PSC certificates. We, we do that to, to afford a um, successful upgrade. So, but you might want to actually have a different um, um, subnets, and you might want to um, be part of different subnets after upgrade as well. What you have to do, you have to add them back after, um, vCenter server migration. Another limitation is that when the source vCenter server is shut down, um, you won't be able to access the uh, applications which are running on that Windows box. As I said, evacuate them up from the upgrade. Finally, although it cannot be seen here, is that the, yeah, the layout play tricks here. So the local uh, OS users are not uh, migrated during the upgrade. So this is true for both uh, appliance upgrade and Windows migration. We don't uh, preserve the OS users. So we have uh, two options here. The first option is to add the users after successful upgrade. But then on the next upgrade, you have to do the same procedure. Another way is just to use the AD users, which is the right way um, to actually um, configure the users and maintain the users. Okay, um, the vCenter server upgrade best practices. So prepare all the networking resources up from the upgrade. All the IP addresses, passwords, AD permissions, certs, prepare everything up from the upgrade because you don't want to get a negative experience during upgrade. You don't want to see that some things stops working, working during upgrade or some information is missing. So prepare everything up front. Use FQDNs instead of IP addresses, everything when uh, this possible. Select proper sizing. So as part of the, so uh, first, first thing which we have uh, done when uh, starting the migration is to deploy a target VCSA. Target VCSA is using um, um, some CPU memory and disk and that sizing is actually, um, based on your use cases, you might want to use more CPU and memory or less CPU and memory. So. Check the, the, the VMware uh, recommendations up from the upgrade in order to know which VCSA size fits best in your use case. Um, Windows OS and DB compatibility, so check all, the, uh, all that up from the upgrade. Um, the products compatibility, check them up front. Um, check which hardware is supported. Um, Recommended topologies, check them up from the upgrade. If one topology is um, going to be deprecated, um, reconfigure your environment to another topology. Backup the, the database and VMs for your upgrade. You would like to have a um, um, good image of um, your vCenter server, so in case something goes wrong, you may want to actually roll back to, to that version. As I said, have a rollback plan. The best one always includes a rollback plan. Um, make sure that the forward and reverse uh, DNS uh, is set up. So actually uh, make sure that you can access um, the, the host name. Um, uh, it can be properly resolved to IP addresses. Um, ensure that there is proper routing between each node, which um, um, 
are included in upgrade. So that there is a uh, network routing between the target VCSA and source VCSA as long with uh, from the jump box to the source VCSA and, quant and target VCSA. Um, if you're using VDS, poor group must be a thermal um, when you are using the ESXi as a deployment target. Um, my advice, use a time sync. So you have a, a different option here. Um, you can use a NTP, you can use a, a guest ops uh, time sync uh, configuration. All those uh, comes pretty handy because there is a, a requirement that the PSE and the vCenter server uh, must be in a closer time, in a, a four minutes um, range. So use a time sync operation, it really uh, saves time. Once we uh, successfully upgrade the vCenter server, there are um, some procedure which um, it's good to uh, to be followed it, to make sure that everything is is there. So check that the networking settings are correctly preserved. So um, check that you can access the, um, your vCenter server as uh, you was able to access your source vCenter server. Um, check that the AD registration is correct. So you can actually uh, log in with uh, different AD users. Domain is correct. Check that the certificates are valid. And check that you can log into the vCenter server and everything is there. All the data you're interested in, inventory data, users, um, statistic events and tasks, everything is there. So I was talking about the, so many caveats here, hints, but they're all online. So they're, they're different source of uh, information. So they're um, Product notes, KB articles, uh, documentation, compatibility guides, so many sources of information, which sometimes is pretty hard to follow in order to find uh, what you're interested in. What you can use is the vSphere Central because it's a, like a central place where all the all that uh, data is there. So, as part of the upgrade, you can also check. Um, the the six uh, the v, the VCSA six five features how we can use them what is the the recommended way to deploy the VCSA all that handy stuff which can um, can uh, come in play also there are a lot of um, videos demos walkthroughs which will help you how how to actually be uh, better prepared for the next version of the VCSA um, one tool which I really recommend is a um, six five upgrade tool. So it's an online uh, browser-based tool, where, which is questionnaire-based. So actually, th there are several questions you have to answer. For example, what is your current topologies? To what topology you have to upgrade after the upgrade? Um, whether you would like to have an enhanced link mode or not, et cetera, et cetera. And as part of those qu questionnaire questions, it actually um, build a plan about what are the sequences of steps you have to do in order to upgrade from the previous version of the uh, of the appliance to the next version of the appliance. Here I prepared some uh, very um, handful upgrade resources which you can um, you can check them out after the, um, the session. Also those are the um, the KB articles I advise to, to to read before doing the upgrade. So I posted here so um, as, as I understood, uh, the, um, the presentation will be uploaded after my talk, so you can actually browse um, those KB articles. And finally, so this was all the upgrades. So what are the future plans of, the, of, of my team and what we are planning to, uh, to invest in? The first thing is actually, as we see, this is a really painful, long process. We would like to actually automate it and um, May make the, the entire path more convenient for you. So we are planning to invest there. Um, so the first version when we the upgrade um, was wife was 6.0. It wasn't, it, it was working, but it wasn't perfect. In 6.5, the upgrade is way more resilient. And we actually want to invest more here. So we actually want to, um, to, to make it even more resilient than that. We, as part of the upgrade, if someone goes through the upgrade, that there are lots of input you have to you have to provide. So uh, credentials, IP addresses, a lot of information. So we actually we think about how we can simplify the installment upgrade user uh, experience. 
And last but not least, um, we plan to decrease the vCenter server and downtime during upgrade. So we're thinking about different options which we can provide. So if you select them, you can um, decrease the entire vCenter server downtime during upgrade. With that, um, I'm done. So um, thank you for attending this session. And now is the time for Q&A.